Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name, as usual, is Bloodstained Wings, and today I thought we would do another unicorn painting, because who doesn't like unicorns? This is a glowy unicorn rainbow forest um, that actually I did as a Patreon reward. Um, and uh, if you guys are ready to watch me start painting this, then please feel free to join. If you're gonna be painting along, we are gonna be using all of the colors. So get them ready now, all of them. Just, we got like alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, lemon yellow, sap green, thylo blue, and quinacrium violet, titanium white. Make sure you get all of that. <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay, so uh, as per the intro, uh, we are going to be doing a unicorn rainbow forest. That's right. Hopefully a pastel rainbow unicorn forest. You guys saw the intro, so you guys know how it ends. I still don't. One of these days, I'll film the intro first. <laughs> uh, we all know that's a lie. Anyways, so um, this is a great way to do a forest that has like kind of like a light tunnel to give it kind of like depth. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, um, I, use, I use paper towel and some gesso um, and then uh, I add the gesso to the paper towel and I just kind of block it around making sure to make it the darkest on the corners and then have it get gradually lighter as I get towards the inside and then not fill in the area here that is around the unicorn. Uh, the unicorn stencil uh, is something that I drew and then cut out. I, I drew that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you would like to use like a regular sticker that you found elsewhere, please feel free to do that. Um, I decided to do this. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to take a different brush and use that brush for trees because I'm there's there's a lot of trees here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to mix. Actually, you know what? I disagree with my plan already. <laughs> I'm going to start with titanium white and I'm going to start with the white around the unicorn because that's going to be our source of light over this whole painting is just the unicorn. Um, that's my plan anyways. So out from the light we're going to have everything kind of less bright and eventually get to like a purpley kind of color. But the way that I'm going to do it is I'm actually still going to keep it rainbow style because um, I thought that that would make it look really fun and interesting. So it'd still be all like pastel -y, um, but already you can see that it's giving it like a little bit of depth. Just having it like that. Um, but I do want it to stay in the like soft and warm and bright kind of categories. I don't want anything to be too dark. So even though we're starting with black on the background, uh, it's not going to end up black because you can already see it's, it's much brighter than that. And that was just a little bit of titanium white on my brush. And we may do that again, but starting off with the yellow. Now, yellow is a very weak color, so you don't really need a whole heck of a lot of it. But we're going to kind of put it in over here. This is my idea rainbow it in this kind of area and then above it we're gonna go red and below it we're gonna go green you get the idea hopefully so there's my yellow we're going to eventually do like tree shapes and stuff as well but first I want to start with the colors so I'm grabbing just a pinch of my alizarin crimson and I'm going back into that peachy color, or the, the yellowy color, trying to make a peachy color. That's, that's the goal here, is to make a peachy color. It always sounds easier than it is. I'll let you know. Because the, uh, the yellow ochre is just not very strong. <laughs> so adding like a little bit of the red can really take it over very quickly. So. Just be careful if you're doing it yourself at home to uh, make sure you add the right amount. 
seeing like that wasn't enough because I was too scared. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. There we go. Get it a little orangey through there. Yes, and now we can go full on to a pink color. That looks like just white. We'll grab a little bit more of the red. There we go. And this just is going to kind of give us an idea of where all the colors are going to go. Eventually, we will have other colors for other situations and whatnot. I'm just going to kind of rub the color off my brush a little bit so we don't end up with a brown because I don't want brown. But now we're going to go into, still with the white, but a little bit of the sap green. So it's like a pastel green. That's what we're going for. A little bit more. And we're going to re-put the white over here so that it still looks like it's the bright spot. That is okay. Okay, who's ready to get dangerous with me? We're going to do Thylo Blue. So make sure you've got a lot of white on your brush. A lot of white on your brush. And just barely, barely touch the blue. Okay, just to show you, there's blue on my brush. Can you see it? I can't either, but that's probably too much blue. That's <laughs> like that's, uh, that's how very little you need of the blue. So just be very, very, very gentle. I'm gonna touch it again once more. Just, I touched it too much, of course I did. Of course I did! Okay, well, hopefully the canvas is white enough to, there we go start from the outside and meander our way towards the inside. Serves me right for grabbing a tiny bit more. <laughs> All right, mixing those together so we get a nice greeny blue going on over here. Once again, we are going to be going over this with other colors and other things, but this is just to lay out our colors so that we know where everything kind of goes. All right, and now we get to do the bottom, which is going to be purple. So I'm just going to grab a heck of a lot of white and a smidge of purple. And it's going to still have the blue in it from previously because blue is that strong, but Okay. Just get down here with purple. So we've got our layout of what we want. This is the layout. This is not the overall design. So I'm gonna start again with the white in the middle, just to really make sure that this is in fact the bright spot. Now I'm gonna start where the green is, just because when we get to the blue, it's gonna start picking up the blue real fast and in a hurry. So just be aware of that when you're doing it. Adding back in the light around it and then blending it out. I'm just gonna clean that brush again, just to make sure there's none of that bluey purple in it because it's gonna, oh, it's gonna. Nicely blended right through there. And then really blend it in this purpley bluey area. And now everything looks like it's really bright in that center area, which is exactly what we want to start with. So, knowing that um, these parts here and this part here is going to be darker, um, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and grab 
Actually, I'm just gonna use that same brush. I'm gonna use this brush again. And we're gonna go into the red. And we're just gonna pull down in one direction. I'm not sure I want it to be wholly red. I probably want it to be a little bit pinky. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white. Okay. And then flip it over. And then we're gonna kinda start adding in some red trees in this corner. There we go. And now if we want, we can take a liner brush and we can add some like tree branches and I'm gonna make them white uh, just because I feel like that's gonna translate well between everything, so. This is just a little bit of goop on the, uh, the liner brush with the white. And then just gonna add some, you know, ideas of where these branches are and what they're doing. Just to kind of give an impression. And we're gonna have orange through here, so. Not that big of a deal if it like perfectly matches and stuff, but it just adds a little bit extra to your painting, which is sometimes all you really need to make it believable is just a little extra. So now we have that, we're going to use a different brush. We're gonna use, I'm gonna use this brush? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my new one inch brush. I haven't used this one yet. Very exciting. And I'm gonna go right into the yellow ochre and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of the lemon yellow. And then there's a little bit of red in my um, white and that's hopefully gonna make a nice orange. And we're just gonna mix it on the brush and keep it like real loosey goosey. Just whatever color it ends up being, that's what we're gonna go with. All right, here we go. Open for an orange. Oh, it's looking like an orange, that's nice. There we go. And now, take our liner brush again with more goo, and, and we're just gonna kinda continue this down so that all the branches and stuff all kind of make sense. We'll have branches split off and things go different places. And little holes in the tree where things happen like that. And get paint on your arm, very important. Get paint on your arm. go. All right. On to the very yellow part. So I'm just going to try to add more of the yellows. I'm just going to really overwhelm my brush with the yellows. And that should be good. Oh, a lot of paint on my brush. That's good. There we go. You want to still kind of keep an idea of where the tree branches are and like what's going on. So I have like less trees here, so I'm going to start having kind of like shapes that kind of come down into the light and are like tree branches that are in and of themselves over here. And these are kind of going the opposite way, so you have to keep in mind where things are and what they're doing. Because now, these trees are over here.
this makes sense for you guys. You're, you're following along with where I'm going and what I'm doing. Going for a rainbow forest. Pastel rainbow forest. The um, putting in of branches is one of the things that I kind of get lost in sometimes. So um, I may not be very chatty and there may not be a lot of ASMR kind of sounds, but it's because I'm very focused in what I'm doing. Is really what's going on. That's going to be covered by a lot of other things, but that's okay. We know it's there, and that's the important part. You can see it's starting to take shape. These all kind of look like birches all of a sudden. <laughs> I, don't know, I didn't necessarily mean for that to happen, but they do. All right, now I still have a lot of yellow in my brush, but the green is gonna overpower it very quickly. But because the yellows are so um, light and bright, uh, the green is gonna kind of end up being a little bit pastel-y, which is nice. So. Using that, keeping that in mind, we're going to have some green bushes over here. And keeping in mind, we're not going past the center area, so that, that still ends up being the bright spot. Run out of paint, just go ahead and grab some more. So there we go more bushes and now we paint more of the trees and you won't necessarily see a whole lot of each individual tree because the bushes are there existing doing things This part got really thick actually <laughs> and there's like none of it visible and that's okay. Oh, my brush wasn't exactly round. There we go, that's better. And just come in like that. We'll do that. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. There we go. Branches going out, branches doing branchy things. If that's what we want. Ready to dive into the blue. Be very gentle with this. So I'm gonna grab the white first. And then I'm just gonna like very, very gently touch it <laughs> and hope that it's not too much. And I'm gonna drag it out on my brush to blend it a little. All right. There we go. Good thing about doing it this way is that your brush ends up having a lot of variations in the, in the colors that are going on and it ends up doing the shadows and the highlights all in one stroke, which is kind of really nice. There we go. And I need a little bit more goop, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab some. Mix it in with a little bit of white. Just so we have the right consistency to be able to continue to paint these trees. Because now these trees are getting kind of thick. Because we're getting to the bottom, the bases of them. The trees kind of get thicker as they get to the bottom, so. 
you kind of want to be able to show a little bit more going on. start having little things that you didn't know existed before just kind of peeking out and reaching for that unicorn If you have trouble getting your paint to flow over top of all of this, just add more of the paint thinner and it should help to sort that problem out. But I'm kind of liking where everything is right now, although I kind of want to go back up here and add like a little branchy do. Like that branch just decided to exist. And, and wherever you see branches, you feel free to put them in. Don't just put them in places because you saw me put them in places. Please feel free to put branches wherever you feel like. You are, in your painting, there are branches. You never know where any of these branches end up going or who's who is attached to what. So, because branches do all kinds of wiggly things on their own, so you don't really need to think about it all that much. See, like this could be attached to this, and you don't know. You don't know. All kinds of weird and wiggly things happen in, in trees and branches. So you can feel free to get wiggly and get crazy with it because, you know, that's how it is. And they'll also cross over each other and do all kinds of weird things because they're three-dimensional beings. They're not just, you know, there. all kinds of little things like that. I'm going to stop getting carried away <laughs> eventually. Um, and now, using the same brush, I'm going to go into the purple and the white. So white. Yes, please. Whoa, geez. Moving all the things. All right. Purple. All the purple. And more white. There we go. All right. Got little bush down there. And then this is a rather large bush. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the alizarin crimson and just add it in to get like kind of a pinky color going on. Just a touch down in the corner here with a little bit of pink to give it a little, you know, like pink happened. Because we kind of skipped indigo and went right to purple, so. Which is fine, we're allowed to do that. No one said we couldn't. This part here can be a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And then we'll just come in here and draw just a little bit more branches and things. Because I think these trees right here are gonna are gonna stop right there. So we're just gonna have little twiggy branches that are hanging about in this area over here. And we can come in and scratch this in with the uh, palette knife as well if we wanted. I don't have to be 
drawn in individually. But it's fun to draw them in individually sometimes, so feel free to do whatever makes you happy. There we go. And now, now that we have all of our trees laid out, now we're going to do an actual highlight on top of that. And we're going to keep in mind our light source while doing this. The light source in this case is the unicorn. So knowing that, so this bush is going to be highlighted and this bush is going to be highlighted just like that and just like that. Right around there. So you can see what would be highlighted and what wouldn't. And it would get kind of quieter as it moves away from the unicorn. Let's pick it up a little bit more white. Keep in mind when you're doing this, shapes of trees, so that it still looks like trees and bushes. Because you don't want to destroy the shapes that you just did, so. You just want to give it a, a little highlight to kind of show that the unicorn is glowing in this depth, in this forest. That's the idea here. It helps to make everything else just kind of fade. So like this like pops more essentially is what we're trying to do. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your highlights. And just be very gentle when you get out to, to other areas. Get up to the yellows a little bit more. Just to kind of give them a little, hey, what's up? There! Looking pretty. I like it. Um, I might just go over one more time with a little bit more of the white, um, just the pure white, with a smaller brush just to brighten this unicorn up just a smidgen. Just want it to be a little bit brighter, particularly in the middle. Just to kind of make sure that it is glowy glowy. The whole thing looks very glowy, glowy. Just be very careful of the uh, leaves you very carefully put in. All right. I think what I'm going to do is add some sparkles in the sky. We're going to do that with our paint thinner. This is our actual paint thinner, not our goop. Paint thinner. And you're going to go right into the white using your paint thinner. All right, get it nice and thin. And then you're just gonna add some sparkles. We're making stars, we're making snow, we're making sparkles. That makes everything look a little bit more magical, I think. And now, now that all the difficult things are complete, we can now do the very easy thing of doing the big reveal of the unicorn. Hopefully it'll come off in one nice, one nice solid piece. That's always my goal, is for it to come off in one nice solid piece. Doesn't always happen, but when it does, no, no, no. 
Well, we're missing the two front legs, but the rest of it did come off very beautifully. There we go. So she's got her little sassy stance. She's like trotting through a forest and uh, all glowy glowy. I hope the glowy glowy comes across. And uh, yeah, I, I really like how that one turned out. We can even do the big reveal of the rest of it so that you don't see the green cape. But uh, this uh, was a Patreon reward. Oh, I'm hitting the camera. <laughs> this was a Patreon reward, um, so it is not available for sale, but I do have many other items in my Etsy shop for sale. If you guys would like to check it out, please feel free to check the description box below. In the description box below, I also talk, uh, talk. I also add links um, for, uh, not links, I actually, no, I, I do, I type out. I type about, that's what I'm trying to say. I type about the um, paints that I'm using and the goop that I'm using um, so that you guys can paint along with me if you would like to. Um, and uh, I will do another paint along with you guys next week. I hope you really enjoyed it. There is that wonderful painting. So thank you so much for joining me as always. The uh, Patreon names are rolling by. Thank you so much to all of my Patreons for supporting me. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I will see you guys next week with some more fun paintings. Uh, remember that you are loved and you deserve to be loved. Mwah! See you next week.